Welcome everyone, in this video we will talk about molar heat capacity. So molar heat capacity, it has the formula by definition, as far as I know. It is 1 over n dq by dt. Here, C is the molar heat capacity. N is the number of moles of gas, let's say you have, number of moles of substance. And you have dq over dt. Now, this represents a rate of change. We could have used delta Q over delta T. But if we use delta, that means that since you put, when you put delta next to Q, let's say, which is heat, and T is the temperature, that would represent a change in the heat, right? Amount of heat that you give. But notice this. If you use delta, that means that the magnitude of the change, it can be in any magnitude. It might be a big change, might be a small change, but... If we are only interested in little changes, so, so, so little changes that we can treat them as infinitesimals, that means infinitely small, we then use D, which is a differential. And if you know derivatives, you already know what I just said. So no worries. Okay. So if this is confusing you, this part, just think of it as delta Q over delta T, but we are interested in small changes for both the temperature and the uh, heat okay and ultimately in this video we want to um we want to in express cp in terms of uh, cv and other constants now what are these even standing for I mean, what is cp what is cv and what is c physically let me define each one and each one for you so c is it's basically the heat required, and I will use shortcuts, that's what I'm saying. So what I mean is, it is the Q required, Q needed, it is the heat needed to increase the temperature by 1 Kelvin for 1 mole of gas, let's say. Okay? Now, for CP, this definition holds completely... But we add some restriction. That is, during this process where we increase the temperature of a gas, one mole of gas, by one Kelvin, we are doing this under constant pressure. So P is constant. So the definition of molar heat capacity for under constant pressure, so Cp, it is the heat required to increase the temperature by one Kelvin for one mole of gas under constant temperature, I mean constant pressure, excuse me. And for you, and for CV, you might already guess it. This is for constant volume, so V is constant. So its definition is that CV is the amount of heat required to increase the uh, temperature of a gas by one uh, Kelvin, and the mole number is so the gas has one mole, and the during this process the Volume is constant, okay? I, do, I hope I'm not confusing this because this is very simple if you really think about it. I hope that I didn't make it confusing for you guys, okay? All right, so what is CP in terms of CV? Well, before we can, uh, we can answer that ultimate question, as it is often the case, we need to discuss, about, discuss other things that lead to it. So we have a formula for DQ. And that is, and this is, I think, it is called the second law of thermodynamics, I think. And it, was, it is basically saying dQ is for an ideal gas, for, a, for any gas, it will be dU plus dW. dU is the internal energy and dV is differential work. And dQ is the amount of heat that we give or the gas gives, okay? It depends on the, it depends on the sign. So by conversion, for example, the conversion that I use, if it is positive, we are giving heat to the gas. If it is negative, we are taking heat from the gas or the gas is giving heat to its surroundings if it is negative, if this is negative. Uh, so, all right. But for an ideal gas, so let me make the transition to ideal gas. And we need to make this transition so that we can use the ideal gas law, okay? For an ideal gas, dQ is equal to ncv dt 
plus PdV. I mean, this part isn't that special, but the special part is here. For an ideal gas, we are neglecting all intermolecular forces. So basically, the molecules of the gas do not affect each other at all. They are not bumping into, into each other in our model. That's how we assume them to be. Of course, that's not the reality, but, but that's our assumption for an ideal gas. Uh, their energy is solely kinetic energy. And you might have heard that kinetic energy is proportional with temperature. So it makes a lot of sense that we have a, a T here, a change of T factor. And this part is a work. And it also makes sense because, I mean, look at this. Pressure is force over area and you have a volume. Volume over area gives you units of length. So force times length, that gives you work. Obviously, you have the dot product, yada, yada, yada. But... In very abrupt terms, in very, well, I mean, if we think of it basically, that's what you can say. Of course, that's not the definition of work, but in case you wonder how this is, gives you work, that's how it gives. So, I mean, at this point, I guess there is one thing that we can do. That is, take this, put it here. Let's do that. So, 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 C is 1 over N. For dq, I will write this. So it is ncv dt plus pdv. Don't forget to divide by dt. And so if we distribute this 1 over n as well, we're going to have cv plus p over n dv by dt. Cool? That's it. Now, if I want to, to express cp, I can say cp is c evaluated under constant pressure, P constant. So it is basically going to be CV plus P over N dV by dt, sorry, dV by dt, evaluated for a constant pressure. Nice? I hope so. And to be able to proceed further, we need to use the ideal gas equation. Ideal gas law, or I don't know what it's called. So that tells us that PV equals NRT. R here is the gas constant. And so it's just a number, basically. It has units, but it's just a number. And so it's going to be, well, here is the catch. Here is the catch. If I solve for V here, V is NRT over P. If I were to take the derivative of V with respect to T, because we have it here, I want to substitute for it, we would have dV by dT equaling. Now, the number of moles, that's just a number. It doesn't change during the process. If not, we, I mean, we're not opening the, let's say, we're not opening a hole in the cage, of, in the, a hole in the container of gas, so the molecule number changes. We are not doing that. And the gas constant doesn't change. Even if we open a hole, it doesn't change. It's like saying that I did something and the value of pi changed. It, it does not change. It's a constant. It's a number. T is the, basically, it's a variable. That's, what, that's why we're taking a, taking a derivative with respect to it. But P, that's the, thing, that's the thing. Normally, P would change. If you're doing some stuff with a gas... It is very probable that the pressure will, will change. For example, if you have a container, the volume is fixed, you are heating it, the pressure will change. It, is, it will increase. But here is the catch. P is constant for our case. We are interested solely in the case where P is constant because that is the case that will give us the CP, right? So... This is a very easy derivative to take. That's what I'm trying to say. That's going to be nr over p. It is just the coefficient of t because the exponent of t is just 1. Okay? So, we can substitute it. Let me do it. We have cv plus p over n. For dv by dt, I will write this, which is nr over p. And would you look at that? Would you look at that? The mole numbers, they cancel. The pressure, they cancel. Think about this. It doesn't matter which pressure you're dealing with for the CP. 
It's interesting, I think. I mean, if the CVs depend on the pressure, though, well, <coughs> I'm not sure about that. Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't want to act as if I am completely sure on that. Okay, CV, it is. Well, it has different value. Well, actually, no, it doesn't have. It doesn't have to. It doesn't have anything to do with pressure. Yeah, excuse me. It is independent of pressure, as far as I can tell, because the CV value for let's say monatomic gases for gases with one atom, let's say for a neon, right, or for helium, it is three over two R, and this is CV. And in a future video, we can derive this conceptually. It comes from degrees of freedom. Okay, in a future video, we can derive it. Perhaps in the next video even. Okay, so as I said, as far as I know, the CV doesn't depend on the pressure. It is. It has to do. It has something to do with the degrees of freedom, and so CP is independent of the pressure, which is interesting. I think just like CV is independent of volume. Okay, so we get CV plus R, and that is it. That is the relation between uh, CP and CV. Now, you can remember that I said for monatomic gases, for gases with one atom, atom like helium, for noble gases, let's say, right? For, for example, hydrogen, it would be, it's not mon monatomic, right? It's diatomic. It has two, it has two atoms or for oxygen as well. But for mon monatomics, CV is... 3 over R. I mean, <laughs> excuse me. It is 3 over 2 R. CP is then, you add 1 R to this, so you get 5 over 2 R. Okay? So that's it. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, please add them in the comment section. I hope to see you in another video. So for that, please consider subscribing. But until then, take care.